Pete from ETR Music here. I have Johnny Solano with me. Hey just guys. Gonna, just going to ask a few questions, have a bit of a conversation. You know, we try and... I don't want to call these interviews. Even though I'm asking questions, you give me answers. <laughs> but just having a conversation. Yeah, totally. Think. So it's that makes e me feel less nervous. Yeah, yeah. ETR <laughs> conversations. That's, that's what we're going for. So, Johnny Solano, why are you in Adelaide right now? I'm in Adelaide right now because I'm... Uh, I'm playing at the Adelaide International Guitar Festival. But you play drums, bro. But I play drums, yeah. I'm playing with a bunch of very, very good guitar players. Yeah. Can um, you name any? One in particular? Yeah, um, Son Hosford. He's that guy. He's yeah. like one of the. He's not that good. But he's the import, right? <laughs> he's the, he's the man. He's the man. Now I'm yeah. very fortunate, actually. I'm here um, uh, with my bass brother, I call him, yeah. Chris Becker. We've yeah. done lots and lots of gigs together, and um, he's. Uh, one of my favourite bass players in the world to play with. So we're here playing with um, Marcel Yamuni, who's one of my very good friends and a uh, you know musical colleague and inspiration from a long way back. I've known him since I was about 15. Simon and I have known each other for since I was 12. And uh, playing with uh, your young yeah. mate Cam, yeah, who's yeah. also awesome and yeah, uh, very talented. Amazing. Young Gun from yeah. Adelaide. Have you met him before? No, first time. We had a rehearsal yesterday. And we did, and the day before, yeah, yeah, so we've been having a bit of a hit. What do you think? He's amazing, man. It's great. What's he got, what's he got to do next? Really cool. What's his next move? His next move is just to keep doing what he's doing, yeah. I think. You know, yeah. just keep plugging away, man. Yeah. And it's, yeah. he's, he's written an album. Um, it's not an interview about, not about him, but he's written an album lately, or recently. Yep. And that's, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, man. And I'll be in the gig tonight, man. Just to yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, well, I think Marcel, our the other, like I, I, Marcel, who I mentioned earlier, he's um, been uh, recording Cam's album. So, okay. yeah, we've heard bits and pieces. Obviously, we've been learning the tunes, and yeah, um, yeah it's been fun to play, man. So the tunes are what you're learning. At, it's a bit of each of the guys. Absolutely. So, and and the. So it's not like the song off the show, really. No, but the, the whole, oh, there'll, there'll be a section of it that's definitely the song Hosford awesome show, don't worry about that. But um, yeah, the, I mean the fourth part to this Adelaide Guitar Festival that I'm really excited about also is playing with Guthrie Govan, who's yeah. from uh, the UK. So yeah. I've spent the better part of the last month um, while I've been in Europe just with the headphones, you know, on planes and buses, just yeah. checking out his stuff. Take notes? I do take yeah. notes. I've, I've um, of the scenery, or of the, music. <laughs> of the scenery and the music, but you know, my learning uh, approach changes uh, a depending on the music, b um, depending on the the difficulty of the gig, and uh, also the amount of time that I've got. Yeah. You know, so sometimes I'll be taking notes, sometimes it'll be just listening because I do like to just get inside the music and know it back to front. Yeah. If I can do that with no cheat sheets, that's the way I like to roll. Yeah. But there's been a couple of little cheat sheets on on this one, but yeah. um, are they notation or just? Yeah, there's there's bits of notation, you know, accents and yeah. obviously time changes and all the rest of it. But yeah, my my charts are definitely you don't need a rocket scientist to work them out. They're pretty simple, yeah, just yeah. roadmaps, you know. Right. So so where did you grow up? Where what's I, your background? I um I grew up in a little town, which is not so little anymore, but um you know 35 k's west of the city in Melbourne called Werribee. Okay. And uh, that's the town where my dad, um, his family settled along with 10,000 other Italians right. that come from his, his town. Yeah, right, okay. But uh, yeah, they, he settled in Werribee and then my mum's Australian, you met my mum. And, uh, and I've kind of been there ever since. I own a house there now with my brother. And um, yeah, I'm still living there, but I'm still in Melbourne. Melbourne's my home. Yeah, as the music hub. Yeah. We find out, you know, I've travelled, but Adelaide's where I live. Melbourne seems to be the place that it's the next step. You know, people go, oh, Adelaide's cool, but I think Melbourne has just got that extra little bit of, well, it's got two million people more to start with. Yeah. So your, your crowd attendance is kind of a little bit better um, as a default, but there's something you can do with Melbourne. Yeah. Me. I mean, I love, I, yeah, I love Adelaide and I love a lot of city, cities in this country, but um, yeah, I think Melbourne and Sydney definitely, you know, for what we do, like, I mean, I, don't, I haven't spent, spent like extended amounts of time in Adelaide, but yeah, I have in Melbourne and Sydney, and there's all, you know, I know a lot of great musicians from there, and there seems to be just a vibe, you know, but Melbourne's definitely my home, so. Okay, cool. But apart from drums, is there anything else? Not really, I'm not really good at much else, to be honest. No, there's no, like, you know, knitting on the plane? No, there's, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's yeah, there's other interests, but, um, 
you know, especially musically, I've, I've, I've sometimes I think of myself as I get worried about being a one trick pony, but drums is pretty much been my life for most of my life. Yeah, so it's a good I, trick to have, man. Yeah, yeah, I try and do it as well as I can, and, and I have fun doing it. So yeah, I, it's, I asked um, Darren Frugia the same question. Yep. Probably about three or four years ago. Is there anything else? No, nah, just drums. <laughs> yeah, and he's written an album, and he's yeah. playing piano on the yeah. album. And, That's awesome, you know, man. And, so next three years, three years from now, I want to hear a song like I hope so, man. You're playing yeah, saxophone. And... All right. Yeah, cool. I'm playing the flute yeah, and all other kinds. At the same time, you're doing Solano, tubular bells. All right, man. That's the yeah. challenge is to finally right. branch you've out. Got a, see how we got go. got three years from now. Today's the 17th of the 7th, 2014. <laughs> three years from now, you're going to hear this guy on his own album. Yeah. It'll all be drums. Playing flute. Yeah. Yeah, snare drum part, <laughs> rack tom part, a kick drum part. Like a solo track. <laughs> no doubt. Have you recorded much for yourself? Um, you other albums, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I've played on a, a bunch of records and I guess a lot of um, what I consider to be my own creative work has been collaborating with these guys, you know, like um, with Simon and Chris, yeah. the trio that I have. Um, we're playing some stuff from that tonight, but okay. yeah, so that it's always that kind of group collaborating where I think, you know, I feel more comfortable getting creative and, and myself and Marcel have done a lot of jamming and um, yeah, his record was like, I almost, con I consider that stuff my stuff as well because we've worked together closely and uh, had the opportunity to work on a John Stevens record with uh, two of my other really good mates, Adam Ventura, yeah. as you know, and Danny Spencer, a great guitar player, but we wrote that album, you know, in three different sittings in Byron Bay with John and um, that was just like a band in a room just bouncing ideas. What a better place to do that. Oh, it was amazing, wow. man. Yeah, we had no phone service there, which Perfect. was great because all of us are normally attached to our no mobile doubt. phones. So yeah. we had no phone service and we had to just, you know, get in there and create. And f for me, that's my favourite kind of creating, probably because it's within my comfort zone yeah. of sitting behind the drums as well. So that would be another thing of yeah. I'd like to branch out. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you backing vocals? No, no uh, but you know, Vanessa Morosi's forced me to sing right. a few things from time to time, which I've been very unhappy about. From behind the kit or at the front? From behind okay. the kit, man. Because <laughs> I can't but, do um, this yeah, song you're on. You just you don't really want to hear me sing. Right, give me, that give way. me a couple of bars and I'll tell you everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing Good that. Good job, man. Hey, no worries. Well, I'll get you. Three hours, three, three years from now, you'll hear the lead vocals as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, man. But you're, who have you toured with? Um, I know a handful, so you've toured with Amorossi, of course, John Stevens, um, yep. Richard Clapton, yeah. um, oh god, let's Blinda see, Carlyle. yeah, I more recently, I'm a stalker, man. My, uh, <laughs> more recently, Belinda Carlisle, uh, earlier this year, Susie Quattro, yeah. and I'm, I'm doing the farewell tour with Susie Quattro next January wow. as well, so I'm pretty excited about that. Already? No, I don't know if it's. I don't know if she's done the farewell thing. Like she's coming back. Apparently, this is the yeah. farewell Australian tour. Like we the did, share farewells, you know. Yeah, like they just keep people. coming back. Yeah, why not? <laughs> but keeps you employed. Yeah, it does yeah. exactly. No, so yeah, that's that's been really cool. Just doing a few extra international things. Um, I've been playing with Bonnie Anderson a little bit, who's like a new artist um, who's signed to Sony. Not so much touring with her at the moment, but there's been bits and pieces happening. But you know. Lots and lots of touring with John, as you know, he's been a main source of work. Lots of stuff with Richard, yeah. lots of stuff with Vanessa, not so much in the last two years. Um, so how do, you, how do you feel? So you The Black Sorrows, actually, okay. more recently, right. which was a gig that came out of, they were on the same bill as um, as Susie on the Red Hot Summer Tour earlier this year. And um, yeah, just Joe said, you want to do some gigs? And, and now I'm, I'm about to do like another 16 or 20 gigs with those guys and that's like that gigs like a whole different kind of animal. It's, it's real jammy, it's um, there's a lot of light and shade, there's a lot of come up, come down and a lot of free reign in you know like your personality to be able to come out and you're playing. So it's that's been really cool fun as well recently. So, so when Linda Carlisle or Susie Quattro or Black Soros are in town are you the first guy? Are you the first port call? Um, or do they call? No, or do they don't call you directly, not Susie on the phone to you it's like No, a I mean yeah the, the Susie gig came up, you know, a very good friend of mine, Nat Allison, who's a, a great um, guitar player, singer, songwriter, she did some stuff with Vanessa back in the day for a little while, and um, I think she was working with um, the same producer uh, as Susie was a few years ago doing a record in the States, I think, and, um, and Susie dug Nat's vibe, I think Nat 
I might have got to play some guitar on, on Susie's record. And um, yeah, she basically said to Nat, hey, um, do you, can you put an Aussie band together? And so I don't know whether I was, I don't know if I was Nat's first call or not, but yeah, she called me, of course, at, you, you know, like you. six months in advance and we planned doing the last tour and obviously Susie was happy, so we're doing the next one. And the Belinda gig came up, uh, I think, you know, Ralph Carr or a couple other people uh, referred me to James Nisbet, who's a very good friend of mine, he's the MD for the Linda Carlisle, he's played guitar with Billy Allen and a whole bunch of other people, we're really good mates now, but he kind of said, yeah, we need some Australian musicians and obviously, you know, you've got to learn your stuff and, and rock up to the gig and be good enough to cut it in rehearsal. Yeah. And, if that happens, then hopefully you're the next call the next time. Yeah. yeah. So you've done First the gig. Twice, twice now. Yeah. 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 So when, like John Stevens, you do a lot of gigs in mm -hmm. And he's just recently done a gig of shows in Bali. Yeah. In Asia, and you're away. I was away. So how do you feel when someone's in your seat? Yeah, when it's terrible, when it's yeah. terrified, Richmond in your seat, you start to get scared. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's but a different man, flavor, I, though, man. It is, man. It is, and I, I would think, have loved to have seen that. Yeah, oh, man. Completely... Pie's one of my, he's one of my all-time favorites, without a doubt. Yeah. But I think that's, you know, what I, I think you, you're more scared about those things. Um, so much scared, but I mean, it's on your mind. You know, as you're growing up, you know, when you haven't done that many gigs, and it's like. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I land the Vanessa gig, or I land the John Stevens gig, and you know, you do a bunch of tours. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this is the first time that a gig's clashing, so I've got to take the night off. And now this other great drummer is going to come in and and do the gig. So yeah, it's on your mind. But as you get older, you do realise that there's a reason that you get booked. You know, and what is that reason? Tell us. Well. I think oh, you know. I overheard Simon's <laughs> interview earlier, and it's it's a lot of it has to do with actually being a good person. Yeah. You know, as cliche as that yeah. sounds, yeah. when people say that you know playing's half of it or whatever, so it's actually get, true. When you get on the gig, you're not going. All right, I need to get every, all my chops. I'm going to get them out. Nah, man. I yeah. mean, yeah. The only time I've seen you do that um, was a Tower of Inspiration. Tower, Tower. Yeah, that's the track. Yeah, yeah, right. And that Osford. Mm -hmm. Who was the guitar? The bass player? Chris Becker. Chris. Yeah. And that was a smoking song, man. Yeah, that was thanks, just amazing. Man. Thanks. We're playing that tonight. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's, That's so cool. And you've moved to Trad Group as well now. I, I have. More of that. Yeah, I have. I'm, 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 I'm going between the two at the moment, yeah. but I've been playing Match Group for the last 10 years. And um, especially for this kind of gig where, you know, you need a bit more technique. Mm -hmm. And I've also been in Europe holidaying, yeah. drinking wine and eating too much food for 30 days. So I just find that that... practice that with you. I did take my practice pad, but this this is the grip that for me I'm able to regain my chops a lot quicker. Really? Yeah, wow. yeah. It's just I, I practiced that way for hours and hours when I was a kid, so I guess it just it comes back it's quicker. Memory, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm using a lot more trad grip tonight, but you know when I'm playing with John and I'm playing with Susie, I'll get the John gig again, man. Do it five. <laughs> exactly. I've not had a call back yet, so. But um, I started playing drums when I was nine. If you didn't have that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, down here at the festival theatre, yeah. there's like the little amphitheatre outside that looks over the pines. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, mum and sister were going to the zoo or something, and my dad and I just come for a bit of a wonder because there was some music playing in that outside amphitheatre. Yeah. And it was a band that was playing in. Pretty funky, and I was, I was digging it. I was probably about nine years old or so. And, yeah. Um, thought nothing more of it. It was really cool. Drum sounded great, it was outside, it was all acoustic and yeah. it was good. I started having lessons at about the you know, age of 12 and my drum teacher gave me a couple of CDs and I picked the one that was playing here, I put the two and two together and I was terrified, that was big. Wow, wow, there you go cool, man. man. And now, you know, Ty and I are yeah. good mates and... I was legendary amazing. man, Yeah, it's really ridiculous. Cool. So now back on you, yeah. uh, I think I've told that I've told that story about three or four other interviews. That's cool. So I'm sorry if you've listened to that for time, but that's where it came from. It's a good story. And I had no idea at that point I was going to be a drummer or, yeah. or become part of this music thing. That's cool. People were really excited about. That. That's really cool. Yeah. You can make you can make or break your, your lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be a good musician and have no money, or you can just get the good gigs and you know a constant flow of work. And, yeah. and that's I think that's an important thing because the reason I ask is there anything else? Is there a plan B? Is there a plan B? No, I've, I, I was talking about this with the boys a couple of nights ago, actually having a bit of a, a D&M with, mm -hmm. with Phil and uh, Phil Tercio and Marcel yesterday morning over breakfast here in Adelaide. But it's just, I think a lot of the times you're like, 
I don't know if it, in, if it happens to people in every other field, but I've felt that way for my whole life. So like, what am I actually going to do? What am I doing with my life? What am I going to do with my life kind of thing? Yeah. But I'm trying to get to the point where it's like, well, I'm actually just doing it. Mm. You know, I'm already doing it. Like, yeah. I always it? wanted to, I, I just always wanted to play the drums. I wanted to play them good. I reckon I could play them a lot better. So I want to, I plan on spending more time yeah. and, you know, I just want to keep trying to get better. But as far as, you know, I've, I've dabbled in trying to get an American visa. That's still in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been gigs that could have happened with Belinda in the States, but it didn't work out. Uh, there's instrumental stuff that I want to plug away at with the boys. Yeah. There's expanding the trio. There's whatever. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm already kind of doing what I want to do. You know, I'm playing the drums. Yeah. I'm making a living out of it. You can do that for the longest so, time. Not like being a sports person. It's different. You know, you've, yeah. got a, you've got a retirement date. That's right. You, know, you might get to 30 and go, I can't run anymore. I'm, I'm planning to 40. play drums till I'm 70. If yeah, I can. Yeah, that's it. That's the good thing maybe. about music. And if I make it, but... Yeah. The older you get, that's a funny comment. Um, we had the, the three drummers. We had Pete Drummond, who's a monster. Darren Fruger, who's a monster. And Joe Trent, who are monsters. All monsters. <laughs> They're all three on the Scary. Kit. And the comment was made, the older you get, the lower your cymbals are. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, the more wise you get, because... You know, Joe, Joe Torano, he's um, 21 or something. Yeah. He's a monster. He's a beast. He's got some symbols up here. Yeah, yeah, like that's right. <laughs> and, um, and then you've got, you know, Pete and Darren's are like... Phew. Don't worry, man, I'm, yeah. in, I'm in Daz and, and Pete's world now. Yeah. I don't know, somebody talked about Vinny, Vinny Colliuta saying that, you know, he's, he wants it to be like he's dealing cards, and I'm, I'm much yeah. the same now. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, my, good, my, good mate, head, my good mate Peter Maslin from Boom Crash Opera, he used to, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Have all that vibe going on, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm about economy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, the higher your hair, the higher the symbols yeah. the back in the head. That's it. Um, so, your favourite drum experience? You told me pretty much you, you've had quite a few, but is there a favourite? Um, hoping, yeah, this... hoping for that John Stevens phone call again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, there's been, there's, there has been a few for me. Um, just, you know, great tour moments, um, you know, across the board, whether it be with John or you know playing the state theatre with Richard Clapton last year was was awesome like playing 30 odd songs you know he's released like 20 records so that was awesome but like drumming moments you know playing with boys uh, in 09 you know alongside Virgil and Ronald Brunner Jr and mm. Thomas Thomas Pridgen at yeah. the uh, Ultimate Drummers Day that yeah. was that and you know great local drummers like my mate Jerry Pantazas, yeah, you know, who's he's just awesome. Well. You really get him over here to do some stuff. Yeah, man, he's fantastic, and that 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 was a real moment for me. Just even you know, just feeling like, hey, man, I'm on the same bill as these guys, and hanging out with them for a whole weekend. Yeah. That was like a massive buzz, yeah. and a lot of practice and hard work went into that. And uh, yeah, man, but the, you know, there's been many Frank, Frank from Drum Team, is a Frank's uh, legend. Really putting that stuff on. So, Absolutely, you know, man. Kudos, man. If I'm half the guy, you are, Frank. You know. Yeah. We owe Frank a lot. He's yeah. so good for drumming in this country. Absolutely. He's awesome. Absolutely. And he gets he gets things happening and, and that little concept of drum scene live or Ultimate Drummer's Weekend, it's 20 years. Totally, man. It's huge. Big, big it's huge. You've played on just the one? Or? Um, I've played on, uh, funny enough, I played on the main stage when I was about 16 in a, a thing called the Premier New Breed right. Ensemble. There are a lot of great drummers who are still really good friends of mine, Ryan Menezes and uh, Marcus Ryan and a whole bunch of other dudes, but um, then I did the Expo Room a lot of times for yeah. different, you know, drum and cymbal companies, yeah. and uh, I've done a bunch of stuff for DW on the stands. But yeah, the, the, my main highlight was 09, mm. like, you know, being on the main stage and doing my own thing, yeah, always, which was I was there at that. Was awesome. It was great. <laughs> it was fun. It was yeah. Very cool. Very cool. You've just come back from Europe. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to live in the world? No, your, your gigs are only a flight away. You tend to fly to every show anyhow. Mm -hmm. I'd, I would I would like to spend some you know uh, I, I fell in love with with America when I was um, in Hollywood recording on the Vanessa Amorossi record um, somewhere in the real world in 07 right. and um, that just started my love affair with <laughs> yeah. wanting to go back to that joint obviously all my most of my favorite players are from there yeah. and just the Who, buzz of, give me a couple of names oh man I'm you know I'm pretty into the the standard fare of my favourite drummers when I was a kid was 100% like Gad, Weckl, I was mm. heavy into Collie Kali yeah. you know, Omar Hakim, but yeah. Chambers was a big influence. Yeah. First time uh, I ever went to was Dennis Chambers. Man, he's so bad. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm just hearing this like, I don't think he's got a couple of landing outside or something. Man. He's a machine. And he's tuning man. his drums, just doing this yeah. crazy with his feet. Yeah. 
that'll do it. And it just gets back yeah. in his Man, yeah. I saw him when I was 14 and it just yeah. changed my life. Yeah. Was, but I was a massive Virgil fan as well. Yeah. Huge Virgil fan, still yeah. am. So if he gives you the gig, he retires, you know, Oh gonna... man, I wish I, I, can, I can't play the stuff that he plays. I'll have to practice for the next 20 he, years. He but, can't hey. play the stuff that he plays. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. He's mental. So you're, yeah, I interrupted. Your favourite your favorite place to live would be the States? At this point, yeah, I definitely want to get, get over there. and Musically, and, uh, a better place to flourish? Yeah, I mean, at, uh, there's just there's such a massive world out there. Obviously, there's a lot more competition, a lot more great mm-hmm. players. But um, you know, I, I'd like to spend some time there, um, and I, I'd actually like to spend some more time in Europe as well, just because yeah. yeah, I just love the culture and the yeah. vibe. So it's in blood. But music, musically, um, America. You know, and I want to hit New York at some point too. You've so. recorded on Amorosi the album. Um, any other albums? That um, yeah, like I said, there was the John record I've, I've done. Um, you know, I've recorded with Richard. Stevens, which, which record? Uh, that was called Changing Times. That was a record that yeah we actually co-wrote right. with him as well, um, okay. Adam and Danny and myself, and so obviously played on every track on that record. Cool. Um, but yeah, that it's it's hard to reel them off the top of my head now. But yeah, there's just been yeah. other bits and pieces. I want to really want to do a record with with my trio as well. Yeah. So right, it's, it's putting records together is not cheap. No, you know, and, <laughs> and getting airplay of that kind of thing is very unlikely compared to an Amorosi yeah, or John. Totally. So that's where it's love. Actually, I've been recording with Leo Sayer recently. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I did the Good Times tour, which was, you know, all those fellas, um, Joe Camilleri and Russell Morris, who's awesome, Richard Clapton and Leo Sayer. But yeah, so we've been playing on some stuff that's um, you know, quite different to to what people know me for, mm-hmm. which is being a bit more heavy handed, but been a bit more Steely Dan-esque kind yeah. of grooves okay. and it's been a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, a couple of last ones. Dead or Alive, drums or not, music or not, who would be the, an amazing phone call for you right now? Let's go and have lunch, let's go have a coffee. Okay. Um, okay, so not a gig? It could be, could be, but could be anything. I'd love to play with Sting one day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's coming out later. Like, it's that's always, is it really? Yeah, yeah. That's always been a dream, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd you know, back in the day, my dream, gig-wise, I was, I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, I want to play with Michael Jackson, or I want to play with Prince, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that was like the benchmark. Now you've got your JTs and yeah. in the pop world, but yeah. um, uh, let me see. I'd like to have a coffee with Buddy Rich, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That'd be his cool. brain. Yeah, man. That'd be, that'd be yeah. insane. Yeah. He's like the forefront, the pioneer of, you know, when people went, oh, drums are actually cool. He'd be able to give you a few tips on trad grip. No doubt. <laughs> trad man himself. Yeah. So finally, this is the question that some people struggle with a little bit. If you were to implement one thing into the industry, what would it be to make it better? To make it better. For everybody, mate, not just you. Um, all about you. Wow, man, that's, <laughs> that's so tough. Um, I, think, I think, you know, the whole playing music for a living thing, well, just playing music, that kind of, that's to bring joy to other people and and to bring joy to yourself as well, but yeah, I just think it all go, it all comes back to just implementing being a good person, and you know, just if you can, if that can be the shining example of just being cool and and uh, you know, being a leader. Yeah, just just giving off good vibes, you know. So so the industry will just be full that, of people that are less tense and we cooler. We get so you know? deep on that. Like, is that something that you learn, or it's just a personality trait? Can people chill out? Can they go, right, oh, I used to be a real dick, now I need um, to chill out a bit because I'm not getting any gigs. Is that something that would happen or it's like... Maybe, you know, maybe, I don't, I don't know, man. It's, a, a it's quite, I, what I think is it's, it's you know, I, I think being on tour, like doing a gig at the local pub or, you know, being in a cover band that works four or five nights a week, it's different to being on tour, you know. Like being on tour is almost like you whack the microscope on stuff because... Mm. You're either hanging out with a bunch. I'm blessed to hang out with a bunch of people that I know really well. Like if Hoss and I are on tour, yeah. <laughs> he's like you know my what? best I'm mate. Nice. So it's like we we just we hang together all the time. But sometimes you're hanging with people who you don't know that well, yeah. and you're spending five hour car trips and long plane rides, and you're in each other's face. Yeah. Yet you deal. You know, certain people just don't care when you get to an airport. They won't lift their own gear up. Like. All that little stuff, yeah. you know, like being sensitive to other people and not getting in people's faces and knowing if, if they like their personal space or, you know, just 
being sensitive to other people. I don't know, it's like you are under the microscope when you're on tour and people are in your face 24-7. So yeah. you've got to, if you want to work in, in doing this kind of work, yeah. you've got to learn to be cool and, and just give people their space. Yeah. Otherwise, you probably won't get the call from these cool. people. Yeah. So Important. anyway, that's... Thank you very much for Thank taking you, my Mark. call. Thank you, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Solano. My pleasure. Thank you. ETIMusic.com for more interviews. Ciao. Cheers.